Good evening and welcome to the very first DB8 virtual open evening. My name is Jim Sharp and I'm proud to say that I'm principal here at DB8. We're coming to you live and direct from our brand new media centre in Richmond Place, Brighton. But I'm really sorry that we can't actually welcome you in person at the moment tonight, either at our campuses in Brighton or Bexhill. However, please do contact us so we can arrange for you to come in and have a bespoke, personalised, COVID safe tour. The aim of this evening is, as the first of several events that we're going to be running, to give you an idea really of what we do at DV8 and introduce you to some of our key staff. We'll be trying to give you a flavour of everything that makes DV8 a great place to come and study and how we go about delivering the study programmes. Please also, I ask that you bear with us a little bit if there's any technical glitches or things don't run as smoothly as we'd hope. This is new for us and we're doing the best we can. So thanks very much. So let's start with what we do. Here at DV8, both in Brighton and in Bexhill, we provide courses specifically for young people aged 16 to 19, which are focused very much and specialise on creative subjects specifically music, media, and games design. Now you'll hear much more detail about the skills and knowledges you'll gain on these courses shortly from the curriculum leads who look after these courses and the teachers who deliver on them. And they will also be the people that will be supporting you in these subjects while studying at DV8. As a student, you'll have the opportunity to do these very practical vocational courses with us as part of a study program that also includes relevant industry specific work experience every year, regular structured one-to-one -one tutorial support. This is all around determining how you're progressing, what you need to do to be more successful, and crucially, what additional support you may need from us in order to keep progressing successfully and develop the skills and knowledge and behaviours that will make you successful. We also, also organise enrichment events, including trips and visits, obviously COVID allowing, and a programme of personal and social development. Now this ranges from careers advice and guidance to enable you to make the very best choices about where you want to move on to after successfully completing your studies at DV8, as well as a whole range of crucial life skills that will help increase your employability and opportunity to move out into the world of employment. Now, it may also be that you need to continue to study maths and English with us, depending upon how things have gone while you've been studying your GCSEs before. Again, we'll provide support with you to do that and ensure that you're at the right level to be successful on those courses. Now, our courses are designed to both suit and most importantly, build upon whatever level the students that come to us arrive with. And they go right up to A-level equivalents. It's important to understand that during the first half term, which is called the right choice period, we'll be working really closely with you to make sure that you're at the right level, you're doing a course that is suited to both your ambition and your skills. And during that time, it may be that you decide to switch levels or even switch courses. That's to ensure that when you really get into the course, you're comfortable and happy and confident that you're absolutely in the right place for you where you are at the moment. Now, we strongly believe that studying creative subjects as part of this structured study program really helps to build the best set of flexible skills, knowledge and behaviours for the ever-changing 21st century world and crucially builds the best chances of success and confidence moving forward. So, just a little bit now really about how we do it. We're a small college of only around 200 students, spread over three different campuses, two in Brighton and one in Bexhill. Our campuses are very much characterised by small class sizes of around 10 students on average, up to a maximum of only 14 on each course. That's our guarantee. This obviously allows us to provide a very high level of individualised support and guidance to every single one of our students on all of our programmes throughout the entire duration of the course. 
This is particularly crucial to build confidence in those creative subjects and all other areas of the study programme as you progress with us here at Deviate. Our tutors are predominantly industry, industry professionals with extensive up-to-date experience in their worlds and work with us whilst often pursuing their careers within those creative industries. So they're really bringing to the courses the most up-to-date knowledge and skills and understanding of what's going to help you progress most successfully. Finally, our courses by their very nature are all very practical based, focused on developing your skills through very much hands-on experience, the opportunity to use the technologies, to use the techniques, to work with your peers, to mean you develop the most cutting edge skills that you'll need as you move forward. I'd really encourage you to read our most recent offset report online. It really highlights the level of support and high quality guidance our students receive, along with really showcasing and highlighting the professional experience of our tutors and how they are fantastic in conveying this to all the students that study with us. So, if you're interested in developing your skills, knowledge and experience in the creative industries, you feel that you would benefit from small class sizes that allow you to receive a really high level of individual support and guidance to really meet your needs, provided by our expert tutors, and you're keen to study in Brighton or Bexhill, then please contact us to arrange a tour of any of our centres. Visit our website for more information and details on how to apply and ask us any questions you like via email or via our website so that we can really shape the course that suits you the best. That's really all from me as way of an introduction. Thank you so much for listening and um, bearing with us during this first virtual presentation. But before I do hand over to our heads of centre, I would like to spend five, 10 minutes, if I may, to respond to some of the questions that we've already had come in um, about DV8 and the courses that we offer. Um, I'm afraid we only have time this evening to answer a few questions, but we will respond individually to everyone who asks questions. So please send them in, phone us up, and we'll answer every question you have about us. So just bear with me while I find some of our questions. So the first question that I've got come through is, how does DV8 compare to other schools and colleges? Well, I hope that I conveyed in my presentation that we're a small, very specialist college, focusing specifically on the creative industries for young people between 16 and 19. And alongside those creative courses, we offer a strong program for developing what you would, I guess, loosely call employability skills. What we're not is a large general further education college with several thousand students studying a whole wide range of different vocational courses from a mixture of provisions. We're also not a more school-like sixth form college, which would be focused mainly on A-levels. We are, as I say, a much smaller focused college focused on a narrow range of courses in a relatively small groups. Now I've been in education for 25 years now, um, both as a teacher and as a curriculum manager and as a principal. And I've always said that it's crucial, particularly post 16, for students to choose the college whose characteristics and environment they feel most comfortable with. Because this is where you'll, where you'll thrive and where you will progress successfully and be happy. Now this is going to be really different for every young person. Some students prefer a large general further, ed further education college. Other students prefer a more school-like sixth form college. And obviously some students will prefer a smaller specialist provision like DV8. I hope that answers that question. Uh, where do students go to when they leave DV8? Another question that we've had come in from quite a few people. So, as I said, our courses go right up to A-level equivalent. So many of our students will progress into higher education or university. They also now progress into higher apprenticeships. 
or as our courses are very vocationally and skill orientated, go straight into employment. In fact, one of our recent uh, ex-music students was selected for and performed on the new artist stage at the most recent Glastonbury Festival, if we can all remember when we had festivals and live events, that is. Um, in the current circumstances, do you think it's a risk to study creative subjects like music or media? This is quite a common question at the moment. And I guess, firstly, there's no guarantee about any course that you would study. However, I would actually argue that it's the opposite. All of our courses are structured to develop skills and knowledge and practical techniques that are valued in their industries and will always be valued and evolve. And you'll hear much more about this later from the curriculum area leads. Also, I would certainly argue that the way the job market is evolving and how many traditionally secure jobs are now being undermined by rapid developments in technology, a lot of research would suggest that actually the development of creativity, flexibility, imagination, alongside a strong work ethic and ability to work effectively in teams is going to be increasingly valued. And that's what we believe the courses at DBA offer. I'll just do a couple more if I have time. He says, just checking the clock. Are the courses the same both at Brighton and Bexhill? Absolutely. Um, we offer exactly the same courses at Brighton and in Bexhill. So depending upon your preference um, in terms of where you live and where you would like to study, then um, you can absolutely study the same courses both in Brighton or Bexhill. Um, interesting question here in regard to is DBA fee paying? Um, no, for all UK and currently EU students, all the courses at DBA, if you're between 16 and 19, are completely free, the whole study programme and everything else. You also may be able to apply for a bursary, which enable you to have access to funds for travel, um, even food, and certainly for IT equipment so that you can ensure that. Whatever your circumstances, you can engage with our um, creative uh, courses, um, both at home and whilst you're in college. Alice, was there another question you were trying to ask? Apologies, I'm just reading another question. So what type of computers do you use? We've been asked there. So I will um, hand that over to our curriculum area leads. But what I do know is that all the computers that we use are specialised for the individual courses. So the students that are on the games courses have computers that are specifically set up and brought for the software and the technology that's needed for that. Similarly, in the music um, courses, um, we use the computers that are specifically set up with the software for those courses. So the computers are very much um, set up and used for the individual courses and specialized for those courses rather than any generic computers that we use there. But as I say, if you're concerned about your sort of uh, personal circumstances and whether you've also got the technology at home, our tutors for the courses can help you with that. And there may well be bursaries available if you haven't got that equipment at home already. Thank you so much for bearing with me under these new circumstances. Um, and I really hope that that was a helpful introduction. Um, we're trying to answer as many questions as they come through to us, but we will um, text or email out responses to all of the other questions that come through and invite you to come in and have a chat, have a virtual chat with us. So please go to the website, look at all the fantastic videos on there from our students and from our staff, um, arrange a virtual tour for us, um, with us and really try and find out what the college can offer to you and whether or not you feel that the type of environment that we provide and the courses that we offer may be the sort of thing that would allow you to excel. Um, thank you so much. Have an enjoyable evening and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations. I'll now be handing over in about five minutes to our two heads of center that look after the students in Bexhill and Brighton respectively. So thanks again, good night.
Good evening. Um, my name's Dave Pine. I'm the head of centre for Vexhill. And my name's Kieran Falkenman, and I'm the head of centre for Brighton. So we'd just like to have a short chat with you about our roles and responsibilities at DVA. Um, firstly, I think the most important thing that we oversee is to make sure all our students are safe, and that includes the staff. We have a culture we like to induct, which is for our students to be ready, respectful, and safe. We like our students to be ready to learn. We like them to be respectful of each other, but also learn in a safe environment. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> so, um, apart from the sort of day-to-day -day stuff that, that's to do with that and the, and the sort of smooth running of things, uh, Dave and I's uh, one of our primary roles is overseeing the curriculum delivery. Uh, and ensuring that our learners are on the right course, that they are progressing at the right rate, that the teaching and learning is good, um, and all of the things uh, to do with curriculum tied together. So that starts from the, um, when the learners join us, when you, when, when you enroll, uh, it's about making sure that the, the right learners are on the right course, um, and that we have an induction period during the early part of the academic year, which which ensures that and also allows for transfer within the programmes to make sure that the study programme works for young people who join us. Um, the study programme also includes English and Maths retakes for those that require them, uh, at both functional skills and GCSE level. Um, and our courses are at level two and level three um, qualification level. Um, a word that you might often hear uh, used to describe the kind of courses we run is uh, vocational. So vocational courses, obviously some will know, some won't, is basically courses that are, guide, are there towards guiding you into a career path. So uh, unlike maybe uh, your school GCSEs where you study a general education, a variety of subjects, or if you were taking A-levels, um, these courses are about designating a subject area and a specialism and working towards that. So music, media and games design being deviates once uh, at present. Um, so the curriculum design is all about ensuring that uh, there is a, uh, a good linkage between industry relevance and the sort of employability skills, which we'll mention a bit more in a moment, and also the, the needs of our exam boards and making sure that your qualification is, is robust and it, it matches the quality needs of that and gets you onto the next stage, uh, be that university or, or further study. Um, so. As far as our kind of ethos, I suppose you could call it, in terms of our, our, our um, curriculum, it's about ensuring that you are working towards um, a career, that there's intent there that means that you're kind of understanding that what you're doing isn't just simply to pass units and assessments and move along, but it's actually part of a bigger life plan and journey that we hope we can be part of building and helping you um, move towards. So if you join us as, for example, a level two music student, um, we would see it as our role to hopefully help you get through level two, through level three, developing more specialist skills as you go along, and then being the bridge that takes you into employment or, or university thereafter. Um, part of that journey is based around um, one of the differences maybe between what, what happens at school and what happens at DVA is a certain amount of independence and kind of decision making that is in the student's hands, the young person's hands. So it's important that um, targets are set and that there's a, a sort of learning plan, but that's something which is entirely based upon the young person uh, driving those things. What are the things that you want to get out of being here and what are the things you're working towards and your teaching team and the support team around that will, will be guiding that. Um, Obviously also part of that as part of the journey is doing things like UCAS uh, and work experience. Uh, so it's about thinking about the next steps and ensuring that they match your goals. Um, a thing about our kind of, um, another thing about our ethos really, Jim already referred to it earlier about the fact that our teachers are people who work in the industry or have recently worked in the industry or have close ties to the industry. And I think that, that is something which sort of uh, is a real key strength for us as a, as a, as a, as a college. Um, you know, we're here to develop confidence and skill and to give inspiration and also to sort of show that hard work is something that, that can be rewarded and can go somewhere. 
Um, there's a lot of uncertainty about jobs in the arts, etc. And again, to echo Jim's words from earlier, those kind of skills, that ability to be creative, to think, uh, you know, outside the box and kind of think of solutions is something that is within all of our courses. And it's something which that's our, our role to really kind of bring those skills to the fore. Um, I think that's probably that's very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so to summarise, so we obviously the curriculum delivery, and and we want to make sure that the curriculum, how we call it intent or how it's designed, meets with what the learners need uh, in terms of their progression uh, while their time at DVA. Also, as part of that learner journey, uh, we want students to obviously achieve in a positive progression but we need to do that we want to make sure that they are fully supported in the classroom so both Kieran and I oversee uh, what we call uh, learning support coordinators uh, we do have a, a quite a high intake of around 60% of our learners declare special education needs so uh, as Jim our principal has said with small class sizes we're able to make sure that we are able to fully support uh, learners within the classroom and to make sure that they achieve their full potential. Um, I also think that we're finally really, we are the first point of contact for parents and for students if they have any concerns. Uh, we are very, uh, we find that the learner voice and the parent voice is very important to us. Uh, being a small college, which means we're quite able to be quite reactive uh, and listen and respond to any kind of concerns that students and parents might have. And with regards to the uh, learner voice, uh, Nicola will talk about that, who's the student services manager uh, later on. But also just to surmise that is both Kieran and I like to make sure that we get feedback from parents and learners and make sure that that feeds into our quality improvement plan because it's really important for us to continually be improving our service. Um, I think that's probably an overview of our uh, uh, roles and responsibilities. Um, we are now going to hand over to, I think it's Hannah next, who's our operations manager. Um, just a quick reminder, obviously, just to say again, if you do want to uh, book a, a tour of one of the buildings in person, a safe tour can be arranged, uh, or a virtual one, so it's just a matter of getting in touch, uh, and we'd be happy to, to welcome you to one of our centres, either in person, or similar to how we're doing it now. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm the Ops Manager for DVA. Um, I've been with DVA uh, a long time. Uh, I'm super proud uh, to be part of the amazing team here and to be able to see our amazing students excel year after year in a really safe and supportive environment. Uh, alongside my brilliant centre team, I oversee lots of areas across all of our sites. This includes uh, health and safety, uh, which also involves our response to the COVID pandemic currently uh, and ensuring that we are very much COVID secure. I'm very pleased to say that we haven't had any positive cases this half term and our staff and students are all very successfully working within COVID safety guidelines. I also look after data, compliance, premises, resources and bursaries alongside Nicola and student services. Another important role I play is the exams officer, which includes maths and English compliance. Uh, at DBA, our students will study maths and English as part of their timetable if they've obtained a GCC grade three or below, or a functional skills level one and below at previous school. There is also the option to improve your grade if you've already got your grade four. If you're applying for level three and haven't achieved your grade four, please don't worry. Every application is based on a case by case basis. If this is your situation at level three, you will study English and maths on a separate day to your vocational lessons. At level two, you'll be studying maths and English as part of your three day week. Finally, I'm very lucky to also be part of enrolments and part of the admissions process and I very much look forward to seeing you after half term when all the interviews will begin.
If you haven't already applied, please do so by going to the website at dbasussex.com forward slash apply and get your application in. Hi, my name is Nicola and I'm the Student Services Manager here at DV8 and that means I'm responsible for making sure learners feel safe and supported while they're at college and just letting them know that there's somewhere they can go to if they're having a bad day or feeling a bit down or if there's other problems or concerns that are affecting them coming to college. So that can range from just having being a friendly face to talk to them to putting in place more structured support like regular planned one-to-one -one meetings or mentoring or longer term counselling support sessions. Um, I also spend time talking to learners about issues around their attendance and their well-being, their welfare, help them to access the bursary scheme if they're worried about money. Um, and also talk to them about their next steps, what they're going to do after they leave DVA, help them with their CVs and job applications and help them write their personal statements and look at their UCAS applications as well. Another part, important part of student services is getting learner involvement in the running of the college and we really encourage students to get involved in, in some of the decision making that, that goes with running a college. So we encourage all learners, all the classes, to nominate uh, a class rep. Um, we hold regular learner voice meetings each half term. And we, it helps the learners to develop the kind of skills um, and behaviours that will be appropriate for them in the workplace, but also uh, allows them the opportunity to feed back into the life of the college and to give us some feedback about aspects of the way the college is run, which we, like, we can respond to um, accordingly. What I love most about my job, I'd say, is probably being able to help learners who are maybe thinking of dropping out, who might have problems or concerns that are affecting them coming to college, and knowing that I've been able to help them overcome that difficulty, overcome that problem, and that they remain at college, and they achieve the qualification that they came to achieve in a subject that they love, be it music, media, games, or events. And DVA is such a great place to be. We get feedback from learners all the time about how they feel safe there, they feel comfortable. It's a fun and friendly environment. We have very small classes, so learners get a lot of close attention, and everybody is, is very friendly and approachable. It's a, a really good environment to learn in. So, if you're thinking of coming to DVA, please take a look at our website. Uh, if you haven't applied yet, please go online at dva.sussex.com forward slash apply or get in touch with our marketing department to arrange a COVID safe, personal bespoke tour of the building. We look forward to seeing you soon. But in the meantime, there's been quite a few questions coming in actually. Um, one that crops up quite a lot is about the bursary scheme and what financial support is available for learners. So we don't ever want uh, money to be a barrier or a reason for learners to stop coming to college. Um, we have a bursary scheme that they can apply to. There is criteria that they uh, need to be, uh, that they need to meet up with. Um, and we have a process for supporting them through that as a centre coordinator who can support them with that. And we make sure as many as possible, as many learners as possible, apply for the bursary and get the support, the financial support that's available to them. That might be for things like um, equipment for the course, travel to college, lunch, um, refreshments, uh, trips or other things associated with their course. And it, it will, the amount that they get is dependent entirely on their own individual situation, their family income, and their circumstances, their living circumstances at the time. So it's not a guaranteed amount, the same for everybody, it's all dependent on circumstances. Another question that, that we have uh, been asked is about work experience and asking, you know, what's happening with work experience in the light of COVID-19 and uh, all the, all the precautions that are in place with that. And it's an interesting question. Obviously, at the moment, it's very difficult for young people to get into the job market. And COVID has had an impact on the labour market. 
And work experience is such an important part of getting that first job for young people. And it is true that some employers are a bit reluctant or, or not as willing to offer such traditional work experience as they may have done before. But what we are finding is that there are a lot of new initiatives and new ideas that are coming along in the form of virtual work experience where um, businesses, employers and, and um, organisations are joining up with different online platforms to offer more kind of immersive, interactive, 360 degree um, careers experiences. So it's an opportunity for young people to work to real employer briefs, to simulate being in the workplace, to develop those skills, to produce work, to present their work, and gain feedback on their work very much like they would in a real workplace. So that's, that's uh, an interesting development that um, we are going to be looking, looking at for the rest of this year. So that's enough from me, I think. Thanks very much for listening. Um, I look forward to meeting you soon, but stay tuned because you're going to hear next from our curriculum leads. We're going to talk to you a bit about the curriculum courses available at DVA. Good night. Hi there, my name is Alice and I oversee admissions at DV8 Sussex and I am joined here tonight with the curriculum area leads in music, games and media. Um, this, thank you everyone for joining us and thank you also for sending all your questions in. Um, we will try and get through as many of them as possible and if we don't get through your questions then please do email us them through to admissions at dv8sussex.com. So I'm going to hand over quickly to the curriculum area lead who just is going to introduce themselves. Hi, my name's Aaron. I'm the curriculum area lead for music. Uh, I deliver on all parts of the music course, um, all units of the music course. I have been working at DV8 for about a year now. And uh, the reason that I enjoy teaching music at DV8 is that I allow students and facilitate students to explore their own creative passions, their own creative directions and the ability to express themselves through their music and their art in a way which really helps them to develop skills that they can take further on either into the industry or into higher education. Cool. Hi folks, my name is Paul and I'm the curriculum area lead for the games department. Uh, so I particularly teach 3D modelling uh, as well as some 2D pixel art uh, and we teach a whole variety of different game development skills, including programming, game design, sound design, uh, and hopefully you achieve a whole holistic picture of games development through the programs that we run. Um, I've been running the games department for four years now, so we started back in 2017, and it's just been going from strength to strength since then. And I'm really passionate about giving students the skills to uh, develop games, to build software, and to really turn something that they really care about into an actual career rather than just something that's a hobby. Cool. Hi, I'm Rich. I'm Group Area Lead for Media. Um, I've been at DV8 for five years, uh, teaching and managing across a range of different courses in creative industries. Um, I'm a recording teacher, uh, so focusing mainly on audio, um, sort of veering into other aspects, the kind of more theoretical aspects of media. Um, why I love media is the nature that it's incredibly interdisciplinary, so you can focus on just one subject or you can have a kind of diverse kind of sort of overview of a range of different kind of disciplines um, in the media industries, which are vast and very, very uh, sort of exciting, um, particularly moving forward as we start to blur between, you know, this kind of physical and digital world. Great, thank you so much. So um, some of these questions are very general and some are more course specific, so it's going to be a mixture of the two. Um, so firstly, to all of you, but I'll start with Erin, um, what's the difference between studying a level two qualification and studying a level three? So I would say that many of the skills that are developed on the level two qualifications are transferred to the level three qualifications. They are very much sequenced together. However, um, I'd say the main difference is the degree of specificity. So whilst you might be utilising similar skills between the two courses, 
um, the specificity, specificity of tasks that you'll be completing um, and the kind of complexity and depth of how those skills are utilized will be increased between the uh, two levels. Cool. Uh, for games, it's really clear the difference. Uh, at level two, we work in 2D games development. Level three, we work in 3D games development. So if you're producing assets for a 2D game, you're using things like Photoshop and pixel art software to make flat 2D images, and you're designing games which are moving on up and down, left and right, that kind of thing. At, at level three, we're working in 3D, so making 3D models using programs like Blender, Substance Painter, and then using Unity and C Sharp to create three-dimensional games, uh, the sort of thing that you're going to see on our modern, modern games console. Uh, other than that, there is obviously uh, a jump in the difficulty and complexity that you would expect at level two and level three. So level two is a really good introduction to core concepts of game design uh, and some of the key skills that you need. Level three is a little bit more challenging in terms of being uh, industry specific for to the kind of jobs that you're going to be stepping into after study. Mm -hmm. I just interject uh, from a sort of media perspective that level two is very much kind of foundation skills and kind of getting you used to kind of the very broad aspect of uh, media production and media practice, um, sort of focusing on kind of building core competencies. And then moving forward to level three, it's definitely sort of pushing towards that kind of specialised portfolio um, type um, outlook towards hopefully taking a specialist area forward and progressing to university or the workplace. Cool. Um, so, Paul, can a student get to pick what they learn within the course units or are they fixed in what they will be learning while they're at DBA? Cool, so the units that students study are sequenced in a certain way and chosen to be specifically journey, um, guiding them through a journey uh, and giving them some intended outcome. That being said, the way that we work is that we give students briefs, and those briefs are open to interpretation, and students can think creatively in terms of how they approach that. So they might have an interest in a particular area, a particular style, and when we give a brief, it will allow the student to bring that aspiration, bring that style, bring, bring that particular perspective in, uh, and then create something that, that they want to create. Great. Um... Rich, this is a media-specific question. Mm -hmm. um, what are the different elements of the media course? Mm -hmm. What will the student be learning on a level two mm -hmm. and on a level mm -hmm. three? On level two, we kind of focus more on the visual side of things. Um, so starting with photography, the kind of core understanding of uh, image production, moving then, uh, sequencing broadly into moving image, and then uh, cascading into uh, interactive media, so website design, also kind of interdisciplinary interactive media practice. Um, on level three, we begin um, sort of keeping you thinking about how the professional profile is going to be uh, developed and particularly focusing on uh, videography, um, moving then into sort of research productions and then a uh, sort of focus on your own particular area of interest. That could be audio, that could be moving image, that could be uh, photography, and then, then taking that forward to um, and sort of finalising your own kind of process, so yeah. Great, thanks Rich. Um, Aaron, mm -hmm. is there a chance to learn the basics of a mixture of instruments while they're studying music, or should they just be focusing on the one that they're currently learning? That's a really interesting question. I think that um, an opportunity for the students to um, explore different instruments and explore the usage of different instruments in different contexts is embedded throughout um, both the level two and level three courses that we have. Um, the students won't be assessed on their instrumental ability, that's certainly not the way that we wish to approach the course, rather um, they are working towards the kind of creation of projects and the creation of um, having outcomes, you know, pieces of music, tracks, things to sync to visual media, things like that. Um, and we would actively encourage all of our students, level two or three, to explore as many instruments, as many production techniques, as many virtual instruments and recording profiles as they can throughout their journey with DBA. Great. Okay. 
Um, Paul, does there need to be prior knowledge of coding slash design to start on either a level two or a level three? It does certainly help. Uh, you would have some advantage from coming in with some experience with at least the most basics of computer science, but we don't have that as an entry requirement, and we do presume that you have no prior experience in that moving forwards. So when you start, you will have introduction to computer science programming type lessons that will give you the foundation that we then develop on. Uh, if you are someone who is a bit more experienced, we are able to give you stretch and challenge in terms of giving you uh, pointers and resources and bespoke information to push your practice forwards, but we certainly wouldn't turn someone away who didn't have any computer science knowledge but was interested in development in general. Great. Um, Rich, how many days per week are the courses and the hours that the student mm -hmm. will be in? Um, so the students are in for three days a week and they're three full days, um, allowing for um, work to, to kind of, you know, run alongside your professional study. Great, thank you. Um, Aaron, which music software will the students be using on the course? So we are currently working in Logic Pro X, uh, which is a software developed by Apple. Uh, the reason that we're currently using it is because it's um, very versatile in terms of being able to provide students with good experience in MIDI and digital production, as well as physical recording, and also has some other really interesting capabilities as well, which certainly the students will get a chance to explore during their time at DDA. Great, thanks Aaron. Cool. Um, what are the next steps after completing a level three course in games development? So if you finish at a level three, you do have a number of options in terms of what your next steps are. And those options are really dependent on your aspirations, uh, how you respond to the workplace versus academic study. So the first option would be to go to university and start to specialise your game development uh, skills. You might move on to 3D modelling, programming specifically, computer science specifically. Um, alternatively, you could look to into the workplace straight away uh, and being a college in East Sussex, we're really well situated with lots of games companies around us uh, and really great connections in terms of studios who want to work with young people uh, at DBA. Uh, obviously, you could also look into things such as apprenticeships uh, and continue working and studying at the same time or with games development, there's a great deal of possibility for you to work independently. Uh, you could produce your own games content, you could produce a whole game of your own uh, and sell that for yourself. So there's really a lot of options in terms of continuing on with games development. Obviously, a lot of the skills that you develop are uh, cross media and cross industry as well. So you could easily step into a web development role, for example, with the foundation of programming that you develop or a graphic design role. So the options really are where you want to go and what kind of route you want to take. Thank you. Um, Rich, what range of equipment do you use on the media course and will the students need to have that equipment at home? Um, so we provide all the equipment here. Obviously, we do say to students that you know it would benefit your time studying in college if you did have equipment at home, but you know, we're not kind of technically sort of specific or kind of you know, there are no kind of detriment to that. Um, equipment we use here, we use a range of uh, Canon DSLR cameras, uh, and we use the Adobe Creative Suite, uh, which are catered for a range of different kind of uh, sort of production um, techniques that you would use on these courses. Great. Um, Aaron, what's the interview process like? What, what's involved in the interview? So, I mean, in essence, the interview is an opportunity for us to get to know the students as well as an opportunity for the students to gain a little bit more of an insight as to what the course will entail and how they will be able to get what they wish to get from the course. Um, it's certainly not the case that I expect students to turn up, get in front of a microphone in front of me and start singing up by a long shot. Um, however, if, um, if you do have anything creative, be it pieces of media, be it any kind of coding or game design that you've done previously, or any assets that you created, or of course, any music, any videos, performances that you've done, things like that, if you do have that, please bring it. It's always really nice to see what you've been doing. It gives us a really fantastic insight into your background and how we can help you to explore what you want to achieve over the course of your time at college. 
Um, it's very much a low pressure environment. We're not going to sit here in a panel as we are today and grill you all. Um, rather, it's, um, yeah, like I say, an opportunity to just explore what you want to achieve and whether you will um, be able to kind of explore what you want to explore and gain what you want to gain from your time with us. Yeah, kind of to jump on that, like it's a, it's a good opportunity for us to demystify the creative process. Um, speaking specifically for the games um, department, many young people maybe are unsure what it means to build games. So uh, it allows us to make that really clear uh, what the expectations are, what they can look forward to, uh, make sure that that's meeting their expectations. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we can move forwards when they're, when they're happy and we're happy with them. Um, coming on board. Totally. And, you know, some students come to us and they're not quite sure what they like in creative industries. And, you know, for us, you know, we're kind of all got the hat of sort of interdisciplinary. We kind of, you know, sort of that cross kind of collaboration is a big part of DVA. And I suppose like you coming in with something that you've made is a really good chance for us to think what kind of course is right for you and kind of steer you in the right direction, I suppose. So, mm. you, know, and, you know, and we're lucky here that we are very, very close that we can kind of you know, push you to making the right decision. Right, and that's, that's um, teachers and students, mm -hmm. so uh, to be around other creative professionals and other people interested in those industries, uh, suddenly you might be exposed to uh, some, some form of media that you weren't, weren't um, previously aware mm -hmm. of, and then like, that's an interest that you can follow and, and, uh, and see, see where it goes, or you can work collaboratively with people from different, different courses to produce a certain project, so the opportunities to mm -hmm. really embody that Cross media uh, creative headspace. Mm -hmm. that. So and I think DBA as a kind of a college which just specialises in those creative subjects allows us to kind of hundred percent dedicate our time to that, which is you know, a really lovely thing. Absolutely. Great, um, Paul. Mainly, um, it's kind of going back onto what you said a bit earlier. But will the courses give enough UCAS points um, for any of the courses to go on to university? Sure, so if you study a two-year level three course with us, you'll be achieving an extended diploma, and that extended diploma is uh, UCAS equivalent to any other level three full-time course. So uh, you'll be able to finish your two years of level three at DV8 and then go on to university just as, as you did um, with A-levels or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so each, each particular uh, grade that you achieve has a particular score, a particular weighting with UCAS points. So depending on how well you do in your, in your, in your course and the skills that you develop, uh, you can get different amounts of uh, UCAS points through that. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Rich, are the media, is the media course mainly practical or theoretical? Uh, it feels on the kind of the, you know, at DD we're kind of very much hands-on. So it is, you know, it veers towards practical more. However, at level three, there's kind of key sort of theoretical concepts that would underpin effective practice are definitely threaded through. Um, and particularly the theoretical aspect of going into, you know, to sort of support you to progress into university, uh, as you would expect in other kind of creative uh, subjects like, you know, but broadly, it's contextualising your work with uh, sort of key media terms you know, from a media perspective. I don't know what you guys think about your courses in terms of practical, theoretical divide, but you know, as I say, mainly practical. Yeah, for sure. Um, the games courses are usually split into three distinct parts for each unit. It's usually research, uh, creation, and then reflection. Uh, and there's a real rhythm that students can find there when they are uh, introduced to a certain mm -hmm. uh, practice or discipline or area within games development. They do some research in terms of how the industry does it, and they apply that knowledge and uh, create something meaningful, mm -hmm. and then they have a look at what they've produced and reflect on what they could do differently next time. So, uh, yeah, I would say very much hands-on. Uh, the majority of the time in lesson is spent building, making, designing, uh, being very practical mm -hmm. uh, and very productive with that. So. Yeah, I totally echo that. I mean, I think ultimately it's an old cliche, um, but you learn by doing, and certainly the music course follows that mantra. Um, you will pick, pick up theoretical knowledge throughout the year as you go. Um, however, there's no music theory test. There's no test on, you know, the physics of sound design or anything like that. It's much more the case that um, by 
engaging in the practical tasks and engaging in the practical activities, you will um, be able to construct a theoretical knowledge which you will then be able to continuously apply in order to really cement that and make sure it's something that you can take and develop further moving forward. Great, and Erin, what styles of music will the students get to make on the course? Uh, it's absolutely the case that they can explore the style or styles that they are most interested in. It would um, it would horrify me if we were to force people into a certain style or genre. That's not the ethos of the college. That's not the ethos of the creative industries in general. Um, all of the units, all of the projects that we undertake on the music course are designed in such a way that regardless of your preference or style of music, uh, you'll not only be able to succeed, but you'll be able to get the kind of fullest development of skills and the widest range of skills as you go throughout those projects. So no matter what your tastes are, there is very much a home for you here. Great. And Paul, what kind of work experience opportunities are there in games development? Cool. So as I mentioned earlier, we're really lucky to be based where we are with uh, East Sussex, Brighton, and the surrounding areas really connected with the games industry in terms of the number of studios that we have here. So we have a specific period of work experience. We have a week that we have where students can uh, be placed inside of studios, work with other creatives, uh, and produce a whole variety of uh, creative artifacts that they can uh, say they were part of. Um, of course, you don't necessarily have to just work in games if you're part of the games um, department so you maybe for example can do work experience in a whole range of tech and creative industries uh, but obviously finding a placement within a studio uh, and that's something that we can support you with is our first priority. Great and are there work experience opportunities in media and music as well? Absolutely yeah, and, yeah as well. As Echo Paul said, you know, we're you know, absolutely blessed to have you know Brighton as our central hub, but also to in the kind of broader Sussex surrounding areas. There's lots of startup companies we've worked with in the past, um, and particularly focusing on students' individual uh, you know, preference. We kind of try to make sure that we cater to make sure that everyone's doing the thing that they can and then to actually produce. Yeah. Great. Um, and this is going to be one of the last questions, we're running out of time. Um, do I have the option of switching courses if I feel that I would do better on another course? Is there that option at the beginning of the year? Yeah, we've got a sort of a six week, um, a six week right choice period where we kind of start thinking, you know, sit, you know, we're working each other out still, we're kind of making sure that the right student is on the right course. And that kind of very clear uh, sort of advice and guidance we give during that six weeks helps us make sure that every student is starting the right thing, that absolutely during that period of time, a student can decide actually media isn't for me, I'm actually just in audio, and then we might have a conversation around music being a better pathway. Because um, it's not just about performance, there's a production element too. Yeah, and of that, that period that we have for students for the first five or six weeks, uh, we are very much kind of looking at curriculum design that allows students to have a bit of a, mm -hmm. a, a taste on a micro level of what the course is on, on a macro. Uh, and then they can really have a better understanding of this is actually what it will be like on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Is this right for me? Uh, so yeah, allows students to taste the spectrum of the, of the course really. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Great, and final question, Erin. Are there any exams um, at DV8? Uh, there are not any sit down, grab your pencil, um, certainly in a vocational sense. Of course, we do run the GCSE English and Maths programmes, which are as they would be elsewhere, but for um, our courses, they are built around project work, around practical work, essentially mirroring industry tasks. Ultimately, we are trying to sequence the courses in such a way that does support um, students moving into professional fields. And part of that is treating the learners like professionals and getting them to do tasks which are professional in their nature. And I don't know about you guys, but I've never been paid to sit down and take an exam. <laughs> <laughs> Great. One day, maybe. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much to our pals for joining and to all of our staff for this evening. Um, and thank you to all of you for joining us and for your questions. Um, as I said before, if we didn't get to answer your questions, then please do email us them through. 
to admissions at dvasussex.com. Um, applications for next year are open and we are hoping to start interviewing after the half term, which is next week. Um, we don't have an application deadline per se, however, because of our small class sizes, we do suggest that you get your application in as early as possible, just so that you're not disappointed further on down the line. So do please do book in for a tour um, and contact us if you have any questions. Apply on our website at dvasussex.com forward slash apply and we hope to hear from you soon. Bye. That was fun. Cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye.